let's work another example together and see what we get. So if C equals 3, 2, 0, 3, this two by two matrix, find the character, characteristic equation is eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors for matrix C. So once again, for an eigenvalue eigenvector pair, the output is a scalar multiple of what we get if we do the uh, matrix multiplication. So we'll get C minus lambda I times X equals zero, which if I do the C matrix minus lambda times the identity, we'll get three minus lambda, two, zero, and three minus lambda. And if I take the determinant of that, and set that determinant equal to zero, we'll get our characteristic equation, which was our first task. So we'll get three minus lambda times three minus lambda minus zero equals zero, or three minus lambda quantity squared equals zero. And so we can see that lambda will be three and three. So we have two roots or two zeros, and they are three and three because if we were to write this as three minus lambda and three minus lambda like we did, you'll see that lambda will be a solution to this equation twice when lambda is three and when lambda is three again. Okay, so we found our characteristic equation, our eigenvalues, let me label those, and we did have a repeat here, that's okay. Let's go ahead and find the eigenvectors of C. So let's put in lambda equals three into our C minus lambda I matrix and solve that for the original problem here to find out when this will give us the zero. In other words, what X value will the output be a scalar multiple of the matrix multiplication, okay? All right, so if we do that, we're gonna have, put a three in, we're gonna get zero, two, zero, zero. And this guy right here tells me that my constants are all zero. And if I RREF that matrix, I will get zero, one, zero, 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 zero. Okay. This tells me that x2 is zero, and I have one non-zero equation in two variables, so that means I need a parameter, but x2 is already nailed down, so that means x1 should be t. Now, notice that this is t times the vector one zero. Uh-oh, we only have one eigenvector to go with our repeated eigenvalues of three. So our eigenvalue eigenvector pair is lambda equals three and the vector one zero. Okay. All right, so this will come into play a little bit later, but we had two eigenvalues, including repeats, but only one eigenvector. So what I want to do now is have you try one. Take matrix M, I want you to find his characteristic equation eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and I'll give you a hint. I would use a cofactor expansion when finding the determinant of this guy. And I would pick a nice easy cofactor expansion, maybe like along the top row. Okay, so we'll pause there and pick up in just a minute after you've had a chance to work on it. Welcome back. Now that you've had a chance to work him through on your own, um, I'll just step through my work. So I did M minus lambda I set, took the determinant, did a cofactor expansion along the first row since that's gonna be a whole lot of zeros. So I only have to really do work on one term. So I'll have three minus lambda times four minus lambda, five minus lambda minus two. And a little bit of algebra tells me that my eigenvalues are gonna be three, three, and six. So the eigenvalue of three was repeated. 
sticking that in and finding m minus 3i all times x equals 0, we find out that we get this matrix, which has not one but two parameters. And so if I pull off the s parameter and the t parameter, so this is an eigenvector, as is that. So 1 half 1 0 is an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue of 3. And so is 1 0 1. And so sometimes we might even write, since we had the eigenvalue repeated, we might write lambda equals 3 and lambda equals 3. Okay. For the other guy, for lambda equals 6, we put him in and find out that we get a single parameter, and the eigenvector that corresponds to him is 0, 1, 1. Okay, so uh, just a quick thing, let's just take our original matrix, 3, 0, 0, negative 2, 4, 2, and negative 2, 1, 5. And if I multiply by, oops, let's move this up so you can see it. If I multiply by some scalar multiple of this guy, so let's say, 0, 3, 3. So if I'd chosen t to be 3, let's see what I get here. I'll get 0 plus 0 plus 0, which is 0. 0 plus 12 plus 6, which is 18. And 0 plus 3 plus 15, which is 18. But notice how this vector is the original guy multiplied by my eigenvalue. Okay. Now let's look at um, some computer together and see if we can see these guys and tie in some connections with our row space, null, null space, and uh, column space. So if we were to take, for example, the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equals three, these red eigenvectors, okay, and in blue I'll do this guy right here, so I'll go over to GeoGebra and show you what's going on there. Okay, so you can see that I've got the um, 0 0.510 and the 101 vector. I made him be orange just so he'd be a little easier to distinguish which of those two vectors are there. And we'll notice that if I were to take linear combinations of these guys, I would make basically a plane through the origin. So he is an eigenspace. Similarly, I can take this blue vector and I can do scalar multiples of him, which would give me a line through the origin, which is an, a vector space as well. And since he's a vector space that corresponds to an eigenvector, he's an eigenspace. And if I do both of these, notice that this line through the origin by the blue vector corresponding to the eigenvalue of 6 is not in the plane of the other two eigenvectors and vice versa. So you can then see that eigenvectors corresponding to distinct eigenvalues, so the eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals 6 has to be linearly independent from either or both or any linear combination of the eigenvectors that corresponds to lambda equals 3 and vice versa is true. So these two vectors are linearly independent to the blue vector, the line through the origin as well. So let's go back to our paper and note that. So vectors from different eigenspaces are always linearly independent. So these red vectors are linearly independent on the blue vector. So if I were to take any pair here, this pair would be linearly independent, that pair would be linearly independent, because this came from the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals six, and each of these came from the eigenspace corresponding to the eigenvalue of lambda equals three. We'll 
talk more about these cool eigenvalues, eigenvectors and stuff in our next section. So see you in the next video.